Now let's take a look at building a basic app layout with a menu that opens and closes. And before I get started, I just want to mention that all of the code for this tutorial will be available in my GitHub. So take a look at the video description below for a link to the repository. And now let's just jump straight into it. So starting with the code from the previous tutorial, the first thing I want to do is create a header component at the top of our app. So let's go over to components and we'll create a new file and we can call that header.js. And inside of that, of course, we want to import react from react. So we can make use of our functional component and we're going to create a new function here. We'll call this header and this is going to return some JSX. So for now, let's just return a header with the name of our app. So in this case, I'm just going to say app name. Now we can make that the default export. So default header. And the next thing we want to do is just import that into our main app. So I'm going to duplicate this line down and we can change the name here to header and the file to header. And now if I place in our header component, we should have our app header on the page. Now what I probably want to do is style this. And there's a bunch of different ways we could go about doing this because we could go the conventional way of just writing our own CSS. And if I was going to do that, you can see that we're already importing a file called app CSS over here. So if I open that up, here we've got some CSS and I could probably just remove all of this because this is what shipped with the original NPX installation. And we can replace that with our own CSS. So if I wanted to, I could create a app header and then just take the CSS class and paste that onto my header as a class name. And of course, there we have a styled header. So that's the conventional CSS approach, if that's the approach that you'd like to follow. But I think I'd like to make use of a CSS framework. And the CSS framework that I really like using is Tailwind CSS. So this is JavaScript configurable CSS. And since we're building a JavaScript app, it's obviously really nice to have CSS that's also configurable with JavaScript. So let's take a look at the getting started page. And this takes us straight to the installation step. So this is actually four steps to install, which is fairly simple. So what we want to do is, of course, yarn add tailwind CSS. So I'm going to go over to the command line and we can paste that command in here. And of course, that is going to install tailwind into our project. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with NPM packages, if you take a look at package JSON now, we should have Tailwind CSS added to our package JSON file. The next thing we want to do is also add in the Tailwind CSS into our app. So I think what I'm going to do here is just get rid of the app CSS file that we've just edited. So let's just delete that entirely. And you can see that we've got another index CSS file here. And that's actually imported into the main index uh, file of our app. So I think we'll make use of this index file. Uh, so what we can do here is just get rid of all the CSS that's in here and we'll paste in our Tailwind CSS. And we'll land up using this CSS file to generate the rest of our Tailwind CSS. Now, if that doesn't make sense to you right now, don't worry, we're going to do that in the next step. So what we want to do first is create a Tailwind config file. So let's go back over to the terminal and we will run that npx command. And so what this has done is it's created a Tailwind config file. So if we want to take a look at that, that should be added to our project down here. And this is where we will eventually start defining any of our own custom classes that don't ship with Tailwind. But for now, I think we can just leave that file as it is so we can forget about it. I'm just going to close that. And the last step that we really need to uh, do here is to process our CSS. So we need to some way of processing these three lines into actual usable CSS. And we're going to do that with uh, post CSS. 
So what I'm gonna do is copy this code and you can see that it says we need to put this code in a post CSS config file. So let's create that file. And we can paste that code in here. Of course, maybe just get rid of these comments. So we're making use of post CSS or a post CSS config file, and this will automatically be picked up by our project whenever we run a post CSS command. But if we take a look at package JSON, package or post CSS is not a package in our project at the moment. So we what we want to do is also just run yarn add post CSS dash CLI. And that is going to install post CSS as one of the packages. So taking a look at package JSON now, we should have post CSS added to our project. The last thing I'm gonna do just for good measure is to also install auto prefixer because that is a requirement by Tailwind. So let's go back over to the command line and yarn add auto prefixer. So now that we have all of the necessary packages, the next thing we wanna do is add in a script that will build our CSS. So what I'm gonna do is just paste in these two lines. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna run a post CSS command that will take the source index file, which is this file, and then create an app CSS file. And in fact, we could probably call this Tailwind CSS. And so now if I uh, run the build CSS command in my terminal, so let's just jump back here and run yarn build CSS. That should generate a Tailwind CSS file for me. So let's go back over to my project. And there we go. We now have a Tailwind CSS file that didn't exist before. And so if we open this up, you can see that there's a lot of CSS that's been generated for us, but that has all been generated and configured using JavaScript, using Tailwind's uh, defaults and then some of our config. So what we probably want to do is whenever we start our app, we also just want to make sure that we build our project as well. So what I'm going to do is maybe just replace the start and build lines with this code. Uh, and what this is going to do is just make sure that we build our CSS whenever we run the yarn start or yarn build command. So if I come back over to the terminal, uh, you can see that we, well, let's just kill this app and then run yarn start again. Uh, what this should do is first build our CSS and then start our React scripts. And that's basically what just happened. So hopefully we don't have any errors. Oops, uh, okay, we cannot find the app CSS file, of course. So if we go back to app CSS, you can see that we're importing that here, but I deleted that file, it no longer exists, so we don't need that anymore. And then I guess the last thing we really need to do as you can see, we've got some default text here, Times New Roman text. The last thing we need to do is in our index.js file, replace the index CSS with Tailwind CSS, because we want to make sure that we're using the newly generated CSS file. And now you can see that uh, Tailwind should have been imported into our project, and we can see that by the font changing. But if I wanted to, I could go back over to my header now and start testing this out with some Tailwind classes. So Tailwind has a class called border B for border bottom. And now we should have a border on the bottom of our site. We can also set this to have a class of font bold. And now we've got bold text and P3 will create some padding around our header. Perfect. Now, just in case you're wondering, these classes can all be found in Tailwind's documentation. So if you go over to Tailwind's website and search for something like border, then you can look at border width and we have a border B, which will give us a one pixel border on the bottom of our site. The same thing for all the other classes. So font weight, uh, we have font bold, which will make our font uh, have a weight of 700, etc. So now that we have a header, let's take a look at creating a footer for our website. So I'm gonna create a new component here and we can call this footer.js. And of course, I'm just going to use the same code that's in our header and we'll just change this up a little bit. Come 
copyright 2020. And now we can probably just add some classes to style this. But before we do that, let's actually import that into our app. So we can duplicate that line down and change this to footer and footer and then pull our footer in here. Great, so we've got the copyright there. I think let's just focus on doing some styling. So we'll say BG gray 200 text center and text XS and P3 just to make it a little bit smaller. Great, I think the last thing I wanna do with this footer is maybe position that all the way at the bottom of the document. So I'm going to add in a class of absolute and bottom zero. And that should throw it all the way down to the bottom of our document. I guess the last thing we should probably do is just give that a class of W full. So that is the full width. Great, so we've got the start of what looks like a good app. In the next video, we'll take a look at creating the rest of the layout and also creating our navigation menu. But for now, that's all I have for you in this video. Please don't forget to subscribe. Please leave a like, share this video with your friends, tell them that this is the best React tutorial series that you've ever seen. And I'll see you guys in the next video.